If you're watching this video, you've chosen to write your claim-based paragraph using one piece of evidence instead of two, which is a great choice for your first formative claim-based paragraph of the year. I want you to take a look at the learning target. Readers are able to explain how their textual evidence supports their claim. Although you're writing a full claim-based paragraph today, I really want you to focus on your explanation or your analysis. You're going to be writing today about your independent reading book. For my example, I'm going to be using Children of Blood and Bone, the text that you read last week in class. So let's get started looking at our claim. Your claim is your argument. It's the statement that you have to prove to the reader by the end of the paragraph. So here's my claim. Despite her outward strength, Zaylee, the main character in Children of Blood and Bone, by Tommy Ademi, feels helpless. So there are two things that I need to prove to you by the end of the paragraph. I need to prove that Zaylee shows outward strength and that despite that, she feels helpless. I want you to notice that I've included the title of the book and the author in my claim statement. You need to do that also. An easy way to do that is just to throw it right at the beginning of this first sentence. Here's an example. In Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Ademi, Zaylee feels helpless despite her outward strength. So an easy place to put it is just right at the beginning of that first sentence. The second part of your claim-based paragraph is your introduction to evidence. This is where you're going to help the reader understand what's happening in this moment in the story, wherever you've chosen your evidence from. So the moment that I've chosen to use for my evidence is when the guard touches Haley and she shrinks and she kind of shows this weakness or helplessness. This is right after she's actually lashed out at them because they were demanding more taxes. So here's my evidence. This is right when he touches her. My skin grows hot as I gasp for breath, clenching my hands to hide my trembling. I want to scream to break every bone in his body, both each second I wither. His touch erases everything I am, everything I fought so hard to become. In this moment, I'm that little girl again, helpless as a soldier drags my mother away. So what does the reader need to know to understand this moment in the story? So I think that the reader needs to know the Arishan guards have shown up, they've demanded more taxes, that Zaylee has actually shown strength, that she's spoken out about how unfair it was, and that this moment is different. So here's my introduction to evidence. When Arishan guards show up and demand more taxes from her mentor, Zaylee isn't afraid to speak up. However, when one of the guards touches her, she instantly shrinks, revealing how helpless she actually feels. So those are the two sentences that are going to be right before my piece of evidence. I want you to pause the video right now. I want you to go write your claim, your introduction to evidence, and your evidence. So you should be halfway through your paragraph at this point. Let's work on our explanation. Remember your explanation or your analysis is what you're really focusing on today. It's actually pretty long for a paragraph where you've only chosen to use one piece of evidence. It should be six to eight sentences long. In the six to eight sentences, you're going to explain your evidence in your own words. You're going to explain how this evidence supports the claim. You're going to talk about specific language like words or phrases in the evidence and you're going to discuss the claim in detail. You do not need to do this in order. In fact, I'm not going to do it in order. So let's look at the different parts of my explanation. Throughout the chapter, Zaylee's actions show her confidence and strength. She speaks out even when she knows it'll get her in trouble, fights confidently, and stands up to those who are trying to intimidate her. So here, I want to prove to you that she shows outward strength. So that's what I'm doing here. So here I'm going to discuss my claim more in detail. I'm showing that she shows strength through speaking out, through fighting confidently, and through standing up to those who intimidate her. However, in this moment, she reveals her weakness. Zaylee knows that she, no matter how hard she trains, she will never be able to change her circumstances. Orishans, like this guard, will always have the upper hand and continue to take whatever they want from her and her people. So I'm doing two things here. I'm explaining my evidence in my own words, and 
I'm explaining how the specific evidence supports the claim. So I want to prove to you that Zaley feels helpless. And I'm doing that by really explaining this piece of evidence, why his touch makes her feel helpless. And it's because she feels in this moment like she can't change her circumstances. Guards like this Orishan guard are always going to take, take, take from her and her people. So next, I want to talk about the specific language or words or phrases that I see in this evidence. The author uses words like trembling, wither, helpless to describe how the guard's touch makes her feel. So I noticed that the author was using these weak words like trembling, wither, and helpless. So those words or phrases help me to really support my claim that Zaley actually feels weak or helpless in this moment, despite the fact that she's been really strong and powerful. Under it all, she feels powerless, as powerless as she did when she watched her mother taken away. Again, I'm just coming back to my evidence and I'm explaining how it supports my claim. That in the moment where she saw her mother, the soldiers drag her mother away, in that moment she feels powerless, and this moment feels like that. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video. I want you to go write six to eight sentences after your evidence that really explains your evidence in your own words, explains how your evidence supports your claim, talks about different words or phrases in your evidence, and really make sure that you're discussing your evidence or, and your claim in detail, that the reader has a strong understanding of both your claim and evidence by the end of your explanation. Okay, lastly is just your concluding statement. Your concluding statement is gonna be one or two sentences that really just wraps up your paragraph. It's gonna bring a sense or a feeling of closure, of finish to your paragraph. And it should remind the reader about your claim. So here's my concluding sentence or my concluding statement. Despite her outward strength, this moment gives us a glimpse at Zaley's fears. She's afraid that she's not actually strong enough to protect herself and those she loves. So I'm making sure that you as a reader feel like my paragraph is finished, it feels complete, and I'm reminding you about my claim. Okay, go write your concluding sentence. After this video, you should actually be finished with your claim-based paragraph. I encourage you to go back through and to highlight the different parts. Make sure that you have a lot of this blue in your paragraph. Have fun.